Hello and welcome to Baiju's exam prep. Welcome to the daily quiz discussion for the 19th of September 2022. Before we begin, a gentle reminder on our ongoing series of political thinkers and ideas. Today, join us live at 7 p.m. on our Telegram channel for a discussion on the ideas, thoughts and philosophies of Kautilya, also known as Chanakya, who was most famous for his work Arthashastra. Beginning with the first question of the day, It reads with reference to biodiversity stripped hair streak elusive prince veined palmer and spotted yellow lancer are there are four options given here option a birds option b butterflies option c plants and option d fishes let us understand the context first this article from today's the hindu takes note of the contribution of a citizen scientist lepidopterist Now what do we mean by a lepidopterist? Lepidopterist is a person who studies or collects butterflies and moths. Roshan Upadhyaya has recorded six previously unspotted species of butterflies and a dragonfly in the state of Arunachal Pradesh. This includes species such as the striped hair streak, elusive prince as well as the winged palmer and spotted yellow lancer. While the first two species have been noted for the first time in India, the last two species have been noted for the first time in arunachal pradesh with this understanding let's get back to the question from our discussion it becomes clear that the answer to this question is option b butterfly moving on to the second question of the day it reads typhoon nanmedal recently in news has made landfall in which of the following country the four options are as follows option a japan option b united states of america option c maldives and option d philippines what is the context this article from today's the hindu takes note of the landfall of typhoon nanmedal in the southwestern kyushu region of japan owing to the threat posed by the storm in terms of high wind speeds torrential rain and the storm surge possibilities the concerned administration have issued a special warning coming back to the question the correct answer is option a japan please note typhoons hurricanes and cyclones are all types of tropical cyclones first of all what do we mean by a tropical cyclone a tropical cyclone includes a rotating organized system of clouds and thunderstorms that originate over tropical or subtropical waters and have closed low level circulation based on the location in which these tropical cyclones occur we have three types typhoons hurricanes and cyclones the tropical cyclones occurring in the northwest pacific are referred to as the typhoons while those occurring in the north atlantic central north pacific and eastern north pacific are referred to as the hurricanes while those occurring in the south pacific and indian ocean are referred to as cyclones with this basic understanding itself even if one is not aware of where the tropical cyclone nanmedal has made landfall the word typhoon itself can be used to eliminate options we know that typhoons are tropical cyclones which occur in northwest pacific with this basic understanding itself we can rule out option b and option c as well because those tropical cyclones occurring in united states of america are referred to as hurricanes while those occurring in maldives are often referred to as cyclones by this technique we would be left only with two options option a and option d hence pay attention to key words in the questions this itself will help you reduce the number of options which can help you get the correct answer moving on to the third question it reads consider the following pairs of revolutions and associated countries there are four pairs given here the first one orange revolution ukraine the second one tulip revolution kyrgyzstan the third pair jasmine revolution tunisia and the fourth pair lotus revolution egypt how many of the above pairs is or are correctly matched please have a look at the options given what is the context this article from the indian express takes note of the speech of the chinese president xi jinping at the ongoing sco or the shanghai cooperation organization summit wherein he urged the member countries to cooperate with each other in order to prevent the destabilizing 
color revolutions now what do we mean by color revolutions color revolution refer to a series of uprisings that first were noticed in the eastern european nations in the early 2000s later these were also witnessed in middle east as well as asian countries these color revolutions were characterized by large scale mobilization on the streets with various types of demands like demands for free elections demand for regime change or demands for removal of authoritarian leaders this article discusses four such revolutions the first one being orange revolution which took place in the ukraine in the year 2004 and 2005 this movement was against the alleged rigging of the election of the president next the tulip revolution also referred to as the first kyrgyz revolution occurred in early 2005 the protests called for the ouster of the then president askar akayev next the jasmine revolution occurred between 2010 december to january 2011 in tunisia this revolution was in response to corruption unemployment inflation and lack of political freedom in the country of tunisia notably this jasmine revolution of tunisia triggered a wave of protests in north africa and the middle east which came to be known as the arab spring and lastly the lotus revolution occurred in egypt in the year 2011 this was in protest against increasing police brutality under the then hosni mubarak government with this understanding let's come back to the question from our discussion it becomes clear that all the four pairs are correctly matched hence the answer to this question would be option d all the four pairs moving on to the fourth question it reads consider the following statements about mission innovation initiative there are two question statements given here the first one reads it is a global initiative aimed at catalyzing action and investment in research development and demonstration to make portable water accessible for all the second question statement reads india is a part of this initiative which of the following statements is or are correct please have a look at the options given what is the context this article from the pab takes note of the visit of union minister dr jitender singh to us to take part in the global clean energy action forum during the visit the minister will also take part in the joint convening of the clean energy ministerial as well as the mission innovation let's try and understand what we mean by mission innovation mission innovation is a global initiative to accelerate public and private clean energy innovation to address climate change it involves initiatives to make clean energy affordable to consumers as well as to generate green jobs and also come up with commercial opportunities in this sector hence this global initiative aims to make clean energy affordable attractive as well as accessible for all hence mission innovation will contribute in a big way to achieving the paris agreement goals also note mission innovation includes 22 countries and the european commission among these 22 countries india too is a part in fact india was one of the founding members and is also an active participant of this initiative from this discussion it becomes clear that the first statement is wrong while the second statement is correct why this is because this initiative that is the mission innovation initiative is not aimed at portable water it is aimed at clean energy since the question asks for the correct statements the answer to this would be option b two only moving on to the last question of the day this is a question from the upsc 2019 prelims paper the question reads with reference to forced labor or vishti in india during the gupta period which one of the following statements is correct the options are as follows option a it was considered a source of income for the state a sort of tax paid by the people option b it was totally absent in the madhya pradesh and kathiawar regions of the gupta empire option c the forced laborer was entitled to weekly wages and option d the eldest son of the laborer was sent as the forced laborer the correct answer is option a note 
Vishti was a kind of forced labor in the Gupta period. It became a source of income for the state administration and it was looked upon as a sort of taxation paid by the people. Also, let us understand the other option statements given here. Note, Vishti being forced labor, the workers were not entitled to any weekly wages. So, this is wrong. Also, under Vishti, anyone from the family could be sent as the forced laborer. It was not specific to the eldest son of the family. Hence, option D is also wrong. Also, as per the available inscriptions, Vishti was most prevalent in Madhya Pradesh and Katyavar regions of the Gupta Empire. Hence, option B is also wrong. Moving on to the fact of the day. PM Pranam Yojana. Here, Pranam stands for Promotion of Alternate Nutrients for Agriculture Management. Now, what is the context? This article from the Indian Express takes note of the proposal of the Union Government to launch a new scheme, PM Pranam Yojana. This scheme aims to reduce the use of chemical fertilizers by incentivizing states. Let us understand the backdrop first. Notably, there has been a significant hike in fertilizer demand in the country during the last five years. This is also evident from this chart given here. The demand for urea, DAP, MOP as well as NPKS have all witnessed increases. Also, given the state subsidy to farmers for fertilizer use, the subsidy burden borne by the government has also witnessed dramatic increases. It has almost touched 2.25 lakh crore in the financial year 2022-23. This marks a 39% increase over the last year itself. In this backdrop, the government proposes the PM Pranam Yojana. As mentioned earlier, it aims to reduce the use of chemical fertilizers. Now, how does it do it? Note, this scheme will not have any separate budget and will be financed through the savings of existing fertilizer subsidy itself. 50% of the subsidy savings will be passed on as a grant to the state that saves money by cutting down fertilizer subsidy. Out of this grant, 70% would be provided for asset creation related to technological adoption of alternate fertilizers and alternate fertilizer production units at village block and district levels. While the remaining 30% would be given as reward to encourage farmers and farmer producer organizations and self groups to reduce their fertilizer usage. This is all we have for today's discussion. Thank you for being with us.